So you've got this part-time artistic hobby that you want to monetize and you're wondering how to get started. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, let's just jump right into this and take a look at a few methods that you can use to monetize your part-time hobby. Okay, so the first method you can use is an obvious one. Now, most artistic hobbies involve a creative process that result in the creation of some type of finished product. All we're gonna do here is find a platform to sell that finished product on. So to figure out what platform is best for your product, you first need to figure out what category your product falls into. And what I mean by that is, is your product a unique handcrafted one-of-a-kind type of item or is it more of a mass-produced type product? One-of-a-kind products tend to do best on platforms like Etsy or eBay. The customers who frequent Etsy are usually looking for handcrafted items whereas the customers on say Amazon are usually looking for more mass-produced items. Now some examples of one-of-a-kind items would be stuff like handcrafted jewelry, uh, customized apparel, uh, sculptures, or even original paintings. You could technically scan your painting and sell copies of it at a cheaper price, but you'd still have that one-off original painting to sell at a much higher price, which would mean Etsy would still be a better platform for you over say something like Amazon. Now that's not to say that you can't sell mass-produced items on platforms like Etsy. You absolutely can. In fact, there's a huge market for it. It's just that the platform itself tends to cater more to handcrafted custom items. Now Etsy and eBay are by no means the only players in the game when it comes to selling original artwork. Now depending on what type of original artwork you're selling, there are other platforms to sell on like Shopify, ArtPal, Fine Art America, Artsy, and many more. You just need to figure out which platform suits your particular needs the best. If it's your intention to bring all of your customers from your huge social media following, then any of these platforms will do. But if you don't have a huge social media following and you're going to be relying on the organic traffic that the platform itself brings in, then a site like Etsy would have a much larger marketplace for you to tap into. As with most of these sites, you'll be able to set up your own personalized storefront to welcome your customers upon arrival. Keep in mind that what you're doing here is actually renting an online storefront from Etsy. It would be no different than renting a storefront from any brick and mortar shopping mall, with the exception of the fact that it's way cheaper. What I'm getting at here is that there are some fees involved. Some sites charge monthly for your storefront, while other sites like Etsy charge per product listed. You just need to figure out what suits you best. Also, keep in mind that you as the store owner will be responsible in most cases for shipping the product to the customers as well as taking care of returns. I only bring this up because when we move on to selling mass-produced items on print-on-demand sites, this won't be the case. Now that being said, let's move on. Now when it comes to mass-produced items, depending on what type of product you're selling, there are many platforms to choose from. So if you're a photographer who wants to create coffee table books filled with his photos, or maybe you're a writer who wants to write science fiction novels, or maybe you're like me and you're an illustrator who wants to create picture books and coloring books for kids, print-on-demand platforms like Kindle Direct Publishing, which is an Amazon-owned company, or Ingram Spark, uh, Barnes & Noble, or maybe something like Lulu would be your best options. Now each of these platforms has its own pros and cons, and I'll go over those in a later video. But for now, just know that there are plenty of options to choose from. And as I mentioned before, with these platforms, you won't have to carry an inventory and you won't have to deal with shipping and returns, which is a definite plus. And all four of these companies have the ability to distribute your products worldwide. Now, maybe you're an illustrator or a photographer who doesn't want to create books. Maybe you'd rather sell your work by the piece, you know, on t-shirts or art prints or maybe iPad cases or iPhone cases. Fear not, there are plenty of platforms out there for you. Some of the biggest names in this category are Amazon Merch, Redbubble, Zazzle, Teespring, and Society6, just to name a few. Once again, these are by no means the only platforms you can sell on, but they're some of the more well-known ones. And just like most print-on-demand companies, you won't have to carry an inventory or deal with shipping and returns. It'll all be taken care of for you. And just as with Etsy, you'll be able to set up your own personalized storefront to sell your products from. And I'll walk you through how to do that in a later video. Now, if you're a musician and you have original music that you want to sell, you can always upload it to iTunes or Spotify. But once again, those are by no means your only options. 
There are over 500 hours of video being uploaded to YouTube every single minute, and someone has to score those videos. So if your thing is creating background music for videos, then sites like Audio Jungle would be a perfect platform for you to sell those musical scores from. I promise you, no matter what type of artistic product you're selling, there is a platform out there that is perfect for your needs. You just need to figure out which one it is. So take a little time, do a little research, and figure out which one is best for you. Okay, so the second way you can monetize your part-time hobby is by creating a YouTube channel. So why a YouTube channel, you ask? Because as a creator, you have a product that you want to sell. And the only way to sell that product is to find somebody who wants to buy it. Now there are two ways to go about doing this. You can either bring your product to the people or bring the people to your product. And by bringing your product to the people, I mean by listing it on sites like Amazon, Etsy, or eBay, and just hoping it'll sell. Yes, just by listing your product on Amazon, you will be exposing it to millions of potential customers worldwide. But you'll also be putting it on a shelf next to millions of other products, making it almost impossible to find. Now, when you bring the people to your product, you essentially narrow the focus, creating sort of a tunnel vision for your potential customers so that they only see your product. This will reap far better rewards in the end. So how do we go about doing that? Well, that's where the YouTube channel comes in. There's no better way to grab someone's attention than by giving them something for free. And whether that something is education or entertainment, YouTube is the perfect platform to do just that. People have always been fascinated by the process of how things are made. The how-to video culture started back in the late 90s with networks like Home and Garden Television and the Food Network. And to this very day, videos showing the process of how something is done pretty much make up the foundation of YouTube. People love to watch the creative process that goes into making something. And once they've seen that process, it's only human nature to want to learn how to do it. You have a product that you want to sell and you created that product as a result of doing your particular hobby. Chances are, the people who would want to buy your product would also be interested in watching you create it. And once they've seen you do that, wanting to learn how to do the hobby themselves is just the next logical step. So what you need to do is you need to create a YouTube channel that will become a hub of information for anyone who might be interested in learning about your particular hobby. Now on this channel, you'll be uploading three types of videos. The first type of video is the process video. Now before any of you throw out the argument that you don't want to be on video, relax, you don't have to be. There are plenty of YouTube channel creators out there who have become extremely successful and have never shown their face. If your hobby is a traditional style hobby, meaning that you create something physical with your hands, then just focus the camera on your hands. If you're like me and you work digitally, simply record your monitor screen by using a screen capture software like Camtasia. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Either way, your pretty little mug doesn't have to appear on screen if you don't want it to. But keep in mind, the more you let people get to know you, the more loyal your following will become. As far as equipment goes, you don't need anything expensive to get started. There are thousands of successful YouTube channels out there that use nothing more than a smartphone to shoot their video. 99% of all smartphones released in the past 10 years have the ability to shoot HD footage. In fact, most can even shoot 4K nowadays. So wipe the fingerprints off the lens of your iPhone, get yourself two 100 watt bright white LED light bulbs and pull the shades off your lamps so that everything is well lit and then simply point your phone in the right direction and you're pretty much good to go. Now you might be thinking, hey, wait a minute. It takes me four or five days to finish a project. Who's gonna wanna watch a 10 hour video of me sculpting? Well, no one. But with some creative editing, and just by speeding up the video by say 1,000 or more percent, we can cut that video down to under an hour. And I'll show you how to do that in an upcoming video. Now once people have seen your process video, many of your viewers are going to want to learn to do what you're doing. And that brings us to the second type of video you're going to be uploading, the tutorial video. Now these tutorial videos don't have to be very long. Anywhere from 2 to 20 minutes in length will do. Regardless of what your hobby is, there are always going to be tips and tricks that'll help you do it better. And you as the expert are simply going to pass those tips on to your viewers in the form of short tutorial videos. Now the third and final video that you'll be uploading to your channel is the product review video. Once again, chances are whatever your hobby is, there's going to be certain tools or equipment that will be required to perform it. And these review videos will give you the opportunity to recommend the best ones for the job. 
Remember what I said, your YouTube channel needs to become a hub of information for your particular hobby. So let's say someone was interested in doing your particular hobby. First of all, they'd want to see it being done. That would be your process video. Secondly, they'd want to learn how to do it. That would be your tutorial video. And finally, they're probably going to want to know which tools are best to use while doing this hobby. And that they'll learn from your product review videos. And that's it. That's your whole YouTube channel. Show your process, give helpful tips, and recommend useful products for those who may want to try your hobby. Now, if you want to upload additional video content to your channel, you absolutely can. But these three type of videos will be your core content. So now that you have a YouTube channel, exactly how do you make money off of it? The first way is obvious. You're showing the creative process for every product you make. At the end of that video, you're simply going to let your viewers know that that finished product in the video is available for sale. And you're going to leave a convenient little link in the description area of your video that takes your viewers directly to your online store. So in essence, your process videos are nothing more than promotional videos for your products. Now the second way you're going to make money off your YouTube channel is by monetizing the videos through ad placement. Now this won't actually start until you have at least a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. So this isn't going to happen right away. But if you keep uploading videos, this will eventually happen. And then you can start making money off of all of your videos simply by placing little advertisements at the beginning of each video. Now the third way that you're going to make money off your YouTube channel is through the product review videos. Most major marketplace websites on the internet today offer something called an affiliate program. In its simplest terms, it's a referral fee for sending customers to their platform. We'll use Amazon as an example. The way it works is it's free to join. And once you join, you'll be issued a referral ID number. Now what you're going to do is you're going to find a product that you want to review on your YouTube channel. And you're going to make sure that that product is available for sale on Amazon. And Amazon in turn will give you a custom URL link for that product page. That customized link will have your referral ID at the end of it. Now all you have to do is copy and paste that referral link into the description section of your product review video. If one of your viewers clicks on that link and buys that product, Amazon will give you a commission for referring them. It's that simple. Now it's important to note that your commission is coming from Amazon's profit and that your viewer is not going to pay anything more by buying the product through your affiliate link. The product is going to be the exact same price that anyone else would pay for it on Amazon. What's great about that is that you can let your viewers know that if they purchase that product through your affiliate link, not only do they get a great product, but they also at no extra cost to them help to support your channel. In a future video, I'll even show you how to use your review videos to help promote your YouTube channel outside of the YouTube platform, bringing you not only additional income, but additional subscribers as well. Okay, so far we've covered two ways to monetize your part-time hobby. The first was to find a platform to sell your finished products on, and the second was to create a YouTube channel to help you promote those products. Now the third and final way is by creating simple mass-produced products that will help you promote your hobby. Remember, your YouTube subscribers are not only potential customers for your finished products, they're also fans of your hobby. And as fans, they may be interested in purchasing merchandise that pertains to your hobby. Just think of this method of monetization as upselling. When a musician walks into a store to buy a guitar, the musician is the hobbyist and the guitar is the tool required to perform the hobby. But the $40 t-shirt he buys that says Fender on it, that's the upsell. Walk through the house of any hobbyist and I guarantee you'll find something, whether it be a t-shirt, a mug, a keychain, something with a logo on it that proclaims to the world, this is my hobby. You're not only going to provide entertainment, education, and advice to your YouTube subscribers, but you're also going to give them the opportunity to let the world know that they are passionate about their hobby. So exactly how are we going to do that? Well, you're going to get creative. And you're going to come up with a catchy saying, or maybe a funny phrase, or maybe some cute little artwork that pertains to your hobby. And then you're going to go to one of those print-on-demand websites that I spoke about earlier, and you're going to put that design on anything it looks good on. And then once you've done that, you're going to sell those mass-produced items in your own online gift store. <laughs> I can actually feel the blank stares right now. And I know what some of you are thinking. I'm not a t-shirt designer, but you don't have to be. Look, you have a hobby that you're passionate about. And as someone who partakes in that hobby, I'm sure at some point in your life you've purchased something, whether it be a t-shirt, a keychain, or a mug that has something on it that lets people know that you are passionate about your hobby. 
So as a hobbyist, you should have a pretty good idea of what you would be interested in purchasing for yourself. So all you have to do is come up with a rough design, maybe a funny saying or some cute imagery. Then, if you're a designer, you simply create the design that you would want to buy if you saw it on a product. And if you're not a designer, then you simply hire a designer to do it for you. There are plenty of websites out there where you can hire designers. In fact, there's a website called Fiverr where you can get original graphics created for as little as $5. And yes, sometimes you get what you pay for. But I've seen professional looking work come out of Fiverr for as little as $20. And then once you have a few designs, set up a storefront on one of those print-on-demand sites I was talking about, like Redbubble, Zazzle, or Society6, and then just sell your own hobby-related merchandise. You can upload a design onto pretty much anything, and I'll be walking you through that process step-by-step step in an upcoming video. Then just promote your merchandise on your YouTube channel, as well as leave a link to your online gift store in the description area of all your videos. Look, I realize that I've covered quite a bit of information in this video, and for some people it may be a little overwhelming. But I'm going to be going over how to do all of this stuff individually, step by step, in upcoming videos. And once you have all of this stuff in place, it's just a matter of feeding the machine. With the exception of some video editing and some social media stuff, most of your time will still be spent doing the hobby that you love to do. You start a project, you record the process, you share a few helpful tips with your subscribers, and then you give them some advice on which equipment is best to use. And then you simply move on, start your next project, and do it all over again. I promise you that all of this stuff is actually quite simple to do. And if you hit that subscribe button and like this video, I'll prove it to you over the next few weeks. I really hope you come along for the ride. And if you do, I'll see you in the next video.